give us something that is going to benefit us, especially in this month of Ramadan, to make ourselves to become more free. It is the um, purpose of knowledge, purpose of being a servant, to become more free. Free from yourself. And more chained to the one who is your master, your sultan, the one who is your beloved. So when that beloved overtakes you, he becomes part of you. You become part of the beloved. You are part of the beloved anyway. We didn't understand that. So people are crying because they're separated. Once you understand how you are not separated and the steps to take, you're not going to cry so much, but your ego is going to cry. Af until a certain time when the crying is not going to affect you so much. So the purpose of the knowledge is to make us to become more free, free from ourselves, free from our ego, from our desire, to understand it. Because to step on it, to control it, to have power over it, means that you are free from its power, its control. You understand? Because now, like what Shaykh Andy said, have you ever seen a man walking on the streets with a horse on his shoulders? He said, no. He says, but I see. He says, billions they are doing that, walking around with a horse on their shoulder. Only a very few, they are riding their horses. What is the horse that he's referring to? The ego. That instead of you riding the horse, the horse is riding you. That's very stupid. Very um, senseless. It is against to our nature. So, once you are controlling it, not only you're free from the, the idea is not to just take it out. You understand? Some um, kind of understanding, some kind of beliefs, they say you must kill it. It's not, the idea is not to kill it. It is there for a reason. And Allah is saying, ride on that. That becomes your burak. So it's not to kill. You take it off first. And then you must learn how to ride it. It's a few steps. Hmm? So you are asking the question, what is it about the nature of the dunya? Sometimes you, it overtakes you like that. And then just one smile from your shaykh or being with the brothers and everything, it goes away. It is not the nature of the dunya. It is how you are making yourself to be part of that dunya. Huh? It is not the dunya. When you look at the dunya, let's say this physical world, it's as if mankind doesn't belong here. Yes or no? Everything is working perfectly. As if mankind doesn't belong here. We don't fit. Huh? In fact, exactly, that's what happened. Adam alayhi salam was sent into this world. And before he was sent to this world, shaitan went around everywhere into this world, boosting all the animals, all the creatures, seen and unseen, to say there is one that Allah is going to send and He's going to kill you. He's going to steal from you. He's going to murder you. He's going to torture you. He's going to cause you so much pain. That's why when Adam salam came into the world in the time of what? The Hajjud time, the time of Fajr. He came, all the animals of the world were gathering at that time to kill him. Because shaitan made that fitna. But shaitan made that fitna, he's not speaking untrue. There is truth in that, but there is also untruth in that. Because what is mankind doing now? Exactly what shaitan is saying. Destroying everything, causing pain to everything. That things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ya latif, delicately creating for thousands of years, we can destroy just like that. For what? For what? For nonsense, for greed, 
What nonsense. Like the early settlers, just to punish the Native Americans here in this country, there are millions of those bisons. Uh, bison is very holy to the Native Americans, so they say we cannot catch this Native American so much, but we can destroy their spirit. So they're riding on their horses, they round up tens of thousands of these bison, and they're running them down, the bison's running away from them, until they came to the edge of that place, the Grand Canyon, and they all jumped down and they died. You understand? What a sickness mankind has. That is saying, even something beautiful I must destroy. But that is not man, that is shaitan, mixing up, guiding the ego. So, now, man doesn't fit, it looks like, into this world. Hmm? This world is always there. And this world is working perfectly. All of creation is working perfectly. Without us even being there. So the world is there, the dunya is there. When we make ourselves to be an unnatural part of the dunya, then that time we're going to get lost in it. What do I mean unnatural part of the dunya? We're sent here to be Khalifatullah. You understand? To be representing Allah. Not to be representing our desires. Not to be representing our ego. So once you are only representing your desires and your ego and you're caught up with that, then this dunya becomes a hell for you. You become a hell to yourself. And that time, you are not part of anything. So, the physical world. Now when you look at the desires, you're saying this dunya, sometimes it consumes us. Dunya meaning whatever that you're worshipping to whatever Allah has created. Okay? Whether it is uh, the, um, the confusion around you, or the politics, or the material, or uh, understandings, or these kinds of things. If you're worshipping and you are losing sight, you're losing sight of your Lord. Those things there, they exist without you too. If you don't think about it, it's not there. When you think about it, it's there. When you think about it, it's there, correct? When you don't think about it, it's as if it's not there. And this is to something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that this world has no reality. This world that has no reality, you can play with its reality. What's that saying? That one saying? Come back to? Hmm. Yeah. So you need to come back to that reality. Okay? So what is it that you are giving reality to? What is it? <sighs> you are so troubled, you are so worried about, let's say, some people were so worried about what to eat. So worried, thinking, thinking, thinking what to eat. Later you eat, suddenly the worry goes away. It's not real. You're thinking what to wear. Up, oh, a toothache hits you. Suddenly that worry goes away. There is no reality there. You're worrying about everything, the burdens of this world. And Allah is saying, the khutbah, Allah is saying, one day, you'll finish from that too. You'll finish from the burdens of this world. Those ones who are intelligent, now they are going to study themselves, they're going to say, oh, I had so much worry, when I get a toothache, it disappears. When I see something and I laugh, it disappears. When I get sad, let's say, differently, it disappears. 
When I go to sleep, it disappears. Tawbah astaghfirullah. When I go to the bathroom, it disappears. So who is making it to appear or disappear? You are. So it's not the dunya that is holding you like that. It is you giving the dunya that reality. Why is it that you're sitting next to the shaykh and the shaykh just smiles at you and everything disappears? Because you believe in the shaykh and you want all the other uh, stupid realities that you make but you don't have the power for it to disappear. You're looking to that one and that one has the power to make it to disappear for you. That's why when you sit and there is a time inside of the time and maybe he's not even doing anything, but you're free. Because now he is taking you somewhere else too. Because he is somewhere else. Because his reality is somewhere else. He is not giving the reality to this. You understand? He's not giving a reality to the shaitan and to the ego. He's giving the reality to Allah and his prophet. He's giving the reality to Ahirat. So now, when you are so filled with the reality that you're making to the chains of this world and you're asking for help and you're sitting next to him and because you ask for help it's easy for the help to reach to you everything may disappear and him and his reality is only that which is in front of you sometimes you're going to get a feeling Sometimes you're going to see something. Sometimes you're going to smell something. But that takes you out from this as far as Safilin. That's why we make zikr. That's why we make the rabita. The rabita with the zikr. Do you understand? It's fighting, your ego is kicking back. Fight. Sit. Make the rabbit with the shaykh. They say, we give you a very simple example. Be with your shaykh. That's what it means. However that you want to be with him. What is the strongest feeling that you have when you are with him? When you are not with him physically, remember that. Until that can maybe change to something much stronger. Because when I say, for example, Rabita, for example, those sons of you have met Shah Afani, and then you're going to say, okay, um, he's here, I'm next to him, he's next to me, da da da. That is from the outside, this kind of eye looking. From outside, this kind of eye looking, one man and one man, correct? Don't be that kind of Rabbi Tattu. Because when you're in the presence of your Shaykh, is it one man and one man? No. You disappear, correct? And only He is there. And Allah is giving us these eyes as an um, example that when you use these eyes, you cannot use it on yourself. When you see something, you don't notice yourself. When you see something, you don't notice yourself. The eyes cannot even see itself, cannot see the face. So everything disappears when you look. So that kind of rabita is what everybody feels when you're next to our shaykh. That kind of rabita when you disappear, when he is overtaking you. Like what Shaykh Afani told me a long time ago. Uh, people making rabita, you sit like this, like Muda, Muda, you sit like this, and then in meditation, and then you imagine your Shaykh is in front of you, and then you cross each other, you become together like this. It's no, it's not like that. He said, if you are not imagining your Shaykh to be like a mountain, and you are like a dust, so then you're not making rabita. But it's not also a imagination. It is not also imagination to think, oh, I'm just a dust and my shaykh is... It's not like that too. We're talking about what you're experiencing, what everybody experiences when you're next to your shaykh. 
So take that experience. I'm giving you copy. Take it. This is what Shaykh is making me to say. Inshallah, he'll be useful for this month. Wa min Allahu tafiq wa fatiha.